agree 28 billion euros of spending cuts and economic reforms by the end of this month. Well, that would pave the way at the start of July for European finance ministers to give it 12 billion euros. The fifth and final instalment of the original 110 billion euro bailout, which was agreed in May last year. Well, EU talks will then begin into drawing up a second bailout for Greece by the 11th of July, which could be another 110 billion euros. Well, that latest bailout is crucial. Greece needs the loan to pay next month's bills, and without it, the country will default by July the 15th. If you don't give money to the people to keep the economy going, the economy will die. So it's not working. There is no use. We need different ways of, um, of facing the crisis. We are angry because we believe that we deserve more than what we get. We worked very hard all those years, and from our, the surplus value we have produced from our work, they've built all those things and they've gained a lot. And when they say they, they mean the capitalists. Let's get the latest, latest now live from Athens. Our correspondent Joel Hills is there. And Joel, within the past hour or so, we've seen violence on the streets. What's the situation on the moment? It's, it's calmed down uh, slightly, Samantha. The, the, uh, a lot of the violence is around the southern part of the square, in the building, I mean, the building where we are, which is above McDonald's and next to the finance ministry, which for obvious reasons was the, uh, bore the brunt of, uh, of some of the initial assault. Uh, protesters have uh, sort of pulled up pray, paving slabs, smashed them and used the debris as rocks to throw at police. Uh, many were wearing balaclavas, all were wearing gas masks, so when the police responded with tear gas, it didn't really have much an effect of, of pushing the crowd back. Uh, there have been, uh, there have been uh, some sort of attempt to set fire to McDonald's, certainly the umbrellas outside McDonald's on the southern part of the square uh, um, have been torched. Uh, the windows have been smashed, as have windows of, of bus stops and, and kiosks. There is uh, a, a, one uh, a vendor, though, who is remains open for business despite all the chaos that's um, unravelled uh, beside him. Tourists were caught up, it would appear, in some of the violence. You could see some of them sheltering under trees and uh, getting what cover they could behind lampposts. N none of the missiles, though, were aimed at them. Everything was aimed, uh, all the anger was focused at the police. Uh, and this was all happening on the southern part of the square. What's happened in the last 10 minutes is the police have, have managed to push the protesters back. I think the protesters have run out of fireworks. Uh, this was uh, uh, a sort of feature of the initial uh, skirmishes that uh, fly fire rounds were being, uh, and as well as uh, explosive bangers were being thrown at police. Those seem to have subsided. Uh, and the, 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 the violent protesters, several hundred of them, have now been pushed back into Constitution Square uh, in with the other demonstrators. Uh, the other demonstrators seem to have thinned out slightly. There, there were several thousand, uh, is my best estimate, at the north of the square, directly outside Parliament, being kept away from Parliament again uh, by riot police. Uh, but they've been there since early morning, uh, chanting slogans, expressing their anger at the bill that uh, Parliament is discussing at the moment. Uh, but it, it's a sign of just how uh, angry people feel, whatever uh, people's real motives for the violence. People came here prepared, clearly, for an exchange with police, prepared for a fight. Uh, the vote, though, isn't until tomorrow, and we'll have to wait and see, depending on the outcome of that vote, how people react. Because although the number of people who were violent was a, was a minority, it was several hundred, uh, there are thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who feel very angry about the situation Greece is in. Joel, this vote, as you mentioned, tomorrow. Is there any question that it will go through? There's an element of uncertainty. I think the consensus, even inside Greece, um, yesterday I was chatting to a, an MP uh, in the north of Greece who is a government MP. Uh, he, though, has warned that he will vote against the bill unless he can win some form of concession. But I think even he believes that what is being, what will be the discussed and the concessions that will be made will be pretty minor. It will be the detail rather than the bill in principle. I think there is a general acceptance on both sides of the of Parliament that some sort of deal has to be thrashed out. Without it, Greece is bust, it's bankrupt, it will not uh, be able to access the last uh, part of emergency funding and it's certainly not in a position where it can fund itself. The financial markets uh, all but refuse to lend Greece, lend to Greece, albeit 
uh, on anything other than a punitive uh, rate that makes it impossible for the country to borrow. So they really are over a barrel. Uh, and although there is talk and anger on the streets about leaving the euro, returning to the drachma, defaulting on debt, uh, it, it is only that. I think the opinion polls tend to suggest that the majority of Greek people, however unwillingly, do accept the, the situation that they're in. I think over and above that, Sam, the, the, there is the issue of the, the vote, even if it is passed tomorrow, in what shape or form it okay. will be. There is, there, there's likely to be some sort of concessions made to opposition politicians, whether it's you know one state pri uh, asset is, the post office is privatised, okay. but the railways are. We don't know yet. Joel Hills, live in Athens. Thank you. Well, the Greek Parliament uh, is being asked to agree 28 billion euros of spending cuts and economic reforms in order to qualify for the next batch of uh, bailout funds. Well, joining us now from Athens by Skype is Elena Hanaritis, uh, who is an MP uh, in the country's ruling uh, Socialist Party. Thank you uh, for being with us. Obviously, a uh, tense situation in Athens at the moment. Uh, are you going to vote for these austerity measures? Uh, yes, of course, I have to. Why? Well, the options are pretty much not very many. We either vote for it and then we continue with our already pre-taken discipline program we have started, or we don't and we're going to run out of cash very soon. But really, uh, what the uh, austerity package is designed to do uh, is to keep Greece uh, solvent uh, within the euro. Perhaps Greece doesn't need the euro anymore. It hasn't done you much good so far, has it? No, I wouldn't take that decision, nor would that take that, uh, that point of view. Um, the situation with Greece, and especially in this package, is just taking care of the liquidity crisis, not the solvency crisis. We are indeed having a solvency issue, and the way to resolve it is with structural reforms that we have started taking already about a year now, but they require to have tangible outcomes more than just a year to uh, look at the results. So unfortunately, however, for us to be able to continue to have structural reforms, we have to go through these, um, these fiscal measures that are really very tight and very tough. Now, whether the euro has helped us or not, um, for the last uh, 10 years we've been part of the euro, we had some um, good times, we had some bad times. This is the worst time we had. I'm not really sure if the reason why we are where we are is because of the euro alone or it's because of the euro in combination with a very weak institutional system we're having in the country. Um, or it's really because of the fact that the euro zone is uh, being managed by um, a rather different uh, yeah. financial yeah. structure. See, that's the point. I mean, we have seen this before. Britain has been through this uh, with the ERM, that when you join an economic system uh, with other people dictating the rules for their benefit and they don't fit your economy, uh, then things tend to come to grief, don't they? Uh, again, we are different in the sense that we have every, every member of the zone has a representative in the central bank of Europe, in, in the ECB. So it's slightly different from say, in saying that the decisions are taken by one specific country without taking into consideration the other members. However, yes, there are a lot of um, constraints, many more constraints, than uh, if you're operating on your own. As a matter of fact, you don't have a monetary policy. Exactly. And, and uh, you know, the truth is that actually probably Greece never really conformed to the letter uh, of the criteria for being a member of the euro, did it? Well, it's really interesting to see is that uh, about a year ago, in, or in 2009 even, if you were to see the criteria, the original criteria that um, were the, 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 the ones that needed to be met by all the member countries right now are not able to be met by any of them, including Germany. So uh, the question is, do we put this criteria just as an entry, entry point, you know, a bar, or do we keep them forever? And if we do keep them forever, should we be controlling countries a little more tightly throughout their period versus just talk about it the moment of a crisis? 
Uh, now, I, I don't doubt your uh, determination, but looking at the past record, it doesn't really look credible, does it, that even if the Parliament votes for these austerity measures, uh, that they're actually going to be delivered on? Well, for the last year, we have delivered... Uh, yeah, I'm talking to you not just as an MP, but also as an economist. I have, uh, I have freshly come into the country from the States, where I've been working at the World Bank on my own and uh, independently with tens of countries. So I can tell you that I haven't really seen so many reforms to be taken, even just legal. You know, passed by Parliament by by one country that is uh, considered to be a rich country, not a developing country. So it's a bit unfair to say that they're not able to deliver. They have been able to deliver in many other previous times, and they are delivering right now. The distinction is, we are dealing with neighboring countries that haven't really seen recently or in the history since the Second World War, a crisis like this. But you're also dealing with demonstrators on the streets. There is impatience. There is impatience. The same impatience we see right now from the mature Greeks that have given up about 40% of their wages and pensions, saying, well, how much longer are we going to be giving up and how much more are we going to give up? So this impatience is, is an issue. I appreciate it and I, I take your point. But I wouldn't take it as a point of lack of credibility. And uh, thank you very much indeed for joining us uh, from Athens there. And okay. with me now is uh, the uh, British uh, MEP, Daniel Hannan. Uh, no doubt about it, a, a brave position being taken there uh, by Eleanor uh, Panaritis. But do you think it's credible? Well, I was very struck by something you said a moment ago, Adam, which is it, we had our experience of this with the ERM. And Elena sounded very much the way British politicians did in the run-up to leaving that system. There's no alternative, it'll be a disaster. Of course, in the event, it was the foundation of the longest period of growth we've ever enjoyed. And although a default is never easy, and Greece is looking at least bad options, it is plainly a less bad option for them well, to devalue, decouple and default and then start pricing their way back into I, I, I was fair to say you've never been an admirer of... Uh of uh, European integration right. and, 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 and who got that one right? And the Eurozone and, and <laughs> yeah. therefore you must feel a certain uh, amount of I told you so uh, at the moment but you say it would be better I mean yeah. supposing Greece defaults banks French banks German banks British banks American banks are going to lose billions of pounds dollars euros whatever currency you want to put it in yeah and we'll be back to layman's too uh, there's, there's no pleasure in saying I told you so nobody likes a smart aleck the point is please listen to us next time yeah. and the same design flaws that led us to this predicament are now being pursued in terms of public policy because the one thing you don't do to an indebted friend is force more loans. No, I understand that. So, so what, you know, yes, we're dealing with le least bad options here, but when you say there'd be problems, there'd be a default and so on, uh, uh, yeah, there, it's going to be awkward, whatever and happens, that but can, it is that less on bad. to us, you know, your constituents. And of all. course, of course, but it also knocks on to... I mean, look at, what, look at the scenes on your screen a moment ago. You know, you're telling me that leaving would cause... Uh, leaving the euro would cause instability in Greece. How much worse does it have to get before we accept the failure of the existing policy. A default is coming. I don't know anyone in Brussels who denies that a default is on the way. This is all about stringing out the current crisis until the taxpayers have assumed all the liability so that when the default comes, instead of it being felt by a small number of bankers and bondholders, it will be felt by all and, of us. And that, and is, that is taking from the poor to give Greece to the rich. If Greece defaults and comes out of the euro, will it stop at Greece? It probably should go to one or two other countries as well because they have the same basic problem that Greece had, which is that their monetary policy was wrong. They had the wrong interest rates, they had the wrong exchange rates because the euro, the ECB, was designing those rates for Central Europe rather than for the countries on the periphery. And where does that leave the European Union? Well, I, I suspect the European Union will survive and my guess, frankly, is that the Greeks will default within the euro, which gives them the worst of all worlds because they will take the hit of a default without the compensating advantage of a devaluation. When you say, and, and as Elena said, you know, we mustn't devalue because then no one will lend us money, do you know what? Would that be such a terrible thing? It was indebted governments that got us into this mess. Maybe not having people to lend you money, i.e. governments having to live within their means, might be the way for us to get out of this problem. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Well, let's go to Syria now, and for the first time since the protests began, President Assad's government has set